for our example, we're going to use the following function. Two sine x minus x squared over 10. So we're going to use Newton's method, which is just the newton raphson method. We're going to use this to find the maximum of this function. So before we jump onto MATLAB, some of our upfront work we're going to have to do here. Um, remember, if we're trying to find the maximum of a function, we want to find the uh, root of the derivative. So we need the derivative. So we'll do that first. So f prime of x, that's going to be our derivative. It's going to be equal to 2 times the cosine of x minus x over 5. So that's just, uh, you know, this is uh, 1 tenth of x squared. So you multiply a tenth by 2, you have 2 tenths, which is 1 fifth times x. That's x over 5. So that's our derivative. Now, we're going to try to find the root of our derivative here. So let's see. Let's go back for a second. I'm going to, instead of calling these f of x, I'm going to call these g of x. So the function we're actually going to try to find the root of is this one here f of x. So we're going to try to find the root of the derivative. If we're going to use Newton's method, that's just newton raphson method where we need to have our function and its derivative. So we need the derivative of our function. So we need f prime of x, which is, of course, g double prime of x. That's the second derivative of g of x. So the derivative here is negative 2 times the sine of x minus 1 fifth. So now when we set this up to do our root finding, we're again, we're finding the root of this equation here. That's going to give us an x value. In the end, we want to find the y value at that location. So we're trying to find the max of this function. OK, so we'll start off. We'll punch in our equations here. So our main equation is y equals uh, 2 sine x minus x squared over 10. So we'll start punching these in. That's going to be our function. We'll call it f. It's going to be uh, two sine x minus uh, x squared over ten. So that's our function. Now we need our derivative. So our first derivative, we'll call it fp for f prime of x. That's going to be uh, 2 times the cosine of x minus x over 5. Then we also are going to need our second derivative. So that's going to be f double prime of x, and that's going to be uh, negative 2 times the sine of x minus 1 fifth. Okay, those are our three important pieces of So we have our main function, but we're actually trying to find the root of our uh, derivative. So we're finding find the max of this 
But to do so, we're going to find the root of this. And then we'll just, we're just going to need this in order to do that using this particular method. OK, so I think now is a good time to make a plot. So I'm going to plot both my function and my derivative, because I want to take a look at both of those while we make our analysis here. Actually, i got to go back to my functions and put some dot operators in here, because that's going to end up being problematic if I don't. And catch a typo. That's good. Okay, so on the left side we have our function, and on the right side we have its derivative. So again, we're trying to find this maximum right here. It's going to be at x is approximately 1.5 give or take. It's actually not helping there. So right around x is 1.5, a little less than that, and the y value is going to be 1.77-ish. So this gives us kind of a rough estimate of what we're looking at there. Again, we don't need to be any more precise than that because we have a whole toolkit of root finding methods where we can get real precise. So we're going to use that instead. But that's what we're looking for is our uh, our maximum at around 1.5. Now notice, looking at this plot, there are two other local maximums, local maxima, maybe a third. You could consider this a local maxima, too. There are also uh, one, two, three local minima. So when we're making our, when we're solving our problem here, we want to make sure that we're picking the correct local value. So we want to make sure we're getting this local maximum and not this minimum, for example. So it's important to note already that we're looking at the one that's happening around x equals 1.5. Now, if we take a look at f prime of x, you can see that there are a number of places where it crosses the x-axis. There's a number of roots here. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 roots. Now, we're trying to find the root of or find a root of this function. We need to make sure we pick the right one. So again, looking at our first plot here, we know our maximum is around 1.5, 1.5, 1.7, somewhere in there, x equals 1.5, 1.7. If we look at this plot here, we can see there's only one root in that region. So we want to make sure that that's the one we're going to get. Um, one way to be real certain about that is to use a bracketing method. So we could you know, run our use a bracketing method going from, say, 0 to 3, and then we'd be certain that we get the correct one. Um, if we use Newton's, Newton's method or the Newton-Raphson method, then we're going to, it's going to be similar, but we're going to have to be real careful where we choose our x value guess. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the Newton-Raphson method, and we'll be careful about where we make our guess. Okay, so we've made our plots. We've done a little bit of analysis here. If we take a look at our equations, um, we can find that uh, we don't really have a divide by zero problem anywhere unless uh, we get, so if we look here, so remember, we're going to use the Newton-Raphson equation. It's going to look like this. So our Newton-Raphson equation is x equals x minus f of x, or in this case, f prime of x, divided by f double prime of x. So we want to make sure that f double prime of x is never going to be 0. Um, so we need to take a look at this and make sure that, basically make sure negative 2 sine x is never equal to uh, 1 fifth. That's the only place we're going to run into problems. So that's just the thing to think about when we make our guess. Um, 
So the sine of x is equal to zero at only a few places. So, so basically, we're at uh, zero degrees. That's where the sine is equal to zero. So, um, okay, we just got, we got to be careful to make sure we don't get uh, that equal to, I guess, one tenth. So we can find the arc sine of one tenth. which is about 5.7 degrees, or in radians, that's going to be about 0 0.1 radians. So just as long as you don't pick 0 0.1, we should be fine for our guess here. We already know that we're going to be pretty close to 1.5. So we can make our guess uh, just kind of looking at our plot which I know you don't have on the screen anymore, but if we look at our plot here, uh, if we pick x equals 2, that should get us pretty close. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick my initial x value here. We'll make it 2. I'm going to call it x equals 2. Okay. So now we're just going to use our standard uh, newton raphson method here. So we got our initial value. Uh, we should probably define a tolerance for our uh, solver here. So uh, I'll we'll call it tall. We'll do uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 10. And then we can run our run our Newton Raphson method. So okay, so we can initialize a counter. We can initialize our error. This is all standard stuff. This is just a repeat of everything we did before with our Newton Raphson method problems. So uh, we jump into our while loop. Then we update our x value using our Newton Raphson method. So x equals x minus. Now in this case, so normally it would be f of x divided by f prime of x, but because we're doing optimization, we're actually trying to find the root of the derivative. The numerator here is going to be f prime of x. Uh, I think I don't, I, hold on, I reused x. I want to not reuse x because we used that for something before. So I'm just going to change all these x's to xr's. Okay, no problem. Okay, so that's going to update our x values. Now we have x old and x r. Now, another thing that's going to be a little different, so normally the next thing we do here is we would uh, calculate the error. And that is the next thing we're going to do. But the error we calculate like this usually. What we're going to do differently here is this. So generally, you want to calculate the error using the value that you're looking for. So with a root finding problem, we already know the y value is y. We don't need to do anything with that. But we're just trying to find the x value. So we calculate the error in our x value. With a problem, with a maximization problem like this, we're actually looking for a y value. Y is what we're trying to find. So when we calculate our error, we actually want to calculate it with the y values instead. So instead of x old and xr, we're going to use f of x old and f of xr. That way we're, we're using y values to calculate our error instead of x values. 
And again, the only reason we're doing that and we're doing it differently, and it'll still work if you do this, if you calculate your error with the X values, but this is going to be more precise if you do it this way. Um, and the reason we're doing it again is because our final answer for this problem, the final answer, find the maximum of uh, Y equals two sine X to minus X squared over 10. The final answer is a Y value when you're trying to find the maximum. So since we're trying to find a Y value, we're using Y values when we calculate the error because that's what we're actually looking for. Then we can add an F print F statement here to just kind of keep us updated, print things on the screen. So that should be enough to get us going here. This should run the whole thing now. So this will find, so this is our newton raphson equation here, or Newton's method equation here. This is going to find the X value. The error is going to be calculated against the Y value. And then in our print, in our print statement, we'll print both the X and the Y value. And eventually we'll find the right one. All right, let's go. Okay, so that actually ran faster and with fewer iterations than I expected. So it only took four iterations. We got an X value. Remember that when we looked at our graph, we said X was going to be around 1.5 and Y was going to be around 1.7. That's exactly what we got here. So let's go back and look at our graph again. I want to show you what's going to happen if we pick... Um, You know, we choose a little differently our initial guess. Okay, so back to our plot here. So again, we found this value here, around 1.5, 1.7 for the y value. But let's say, so we picked our initial guess so that we would be finding the root of our um, derivative to be right around here. So we picked x equals 2 as our uh, initial guess. Let's say we make an initial guess elsewhere. Let's say we pick x equals zero as our initial guess. Let's see what happens there. Mm. Actually, I think, well, let's, let's see what happens. We'll try a couple of different x values and we'll see kind of how we can change what we find here. So here's our initial guess here. We said x equals 2. Let's call it x equals 0. We'll give it a run and we'll see what happens. OK, so first of all, we notice it takes a lot more iterations to get through it. So instead of taking just four iterations, it took 27 iterations. And also notice that our the x value that we found is not 1.5, it's 5.26, 5.27, and our y value is negative 4.47. So we jump back over to our plot. What we can see is, so uh, 5.26, that means we are kind of in this region here. So it looks like we actually found this root of our we found that root of our derivative function. And um, what we actually found was this minimum instead. So when we picked 2 as our initial guess, we got the correct maximum. When we picked 0 as our initial guess, we actually found this minimum instead. So you can see that just kind of where you pick your initial x value can make a big difference. And it's not necessarily going to fall right where you think it's going to either. So it's important to kind of look at how you make your guesses and where they, where they end up. And in order to get from zero, uh, to get from zero all the way over here, it took a lot of iterations. It took a lot of bouncing around everywhere before it finally got to that location. But you can try, you know, different x values and see where your final answer ends up.
kind of see how that all how it all shakes out.